From Newsweek, Prince Harry changes country of residence in new filing. Amazing news, Fox Piss, the ginger mog, is finally setting up shop. Oh, where, oh, oh no. In Santa Barbara? That, that's just down the road from me. But every cloud has a silver lining, because that means the next time we get flash floods, hopefully him and his missus will end up in the sea. Fantastic news. Yes, it may end up in my own house being washed into the Pacific Ocean, but that's a price I'm more than willing to pay. I can live out a variation of the old playground joke. How do you stop Prince Harry from drowning? Take your foot off his head. Okay, this was published today, April 17th. Apparently, he's made it official. Prince Harry has changed his country of residence from Britain to the United States in official paperwork, four years after quitting the palace for a new life in California. The Duke of Sussex filed a notice changing his personal details in connection with Travelist, his ecotourism non-profit. Non-profit? He's a rat. He's a rat. He's a non-profit, like Oxfam's a non-profit. And if you don't know about Oxfam, their employees were basically treating third world countries like gigantic pleasure palaces. If you want to get your hands on a bag of rice, zzzz, gotta get your hands on that bad boy first, love. It comes after Harry and me again, Mardi Ass, lost their UK home, Frogmore Cottage, having been evicted by the royals last year, leaving them with no permanent base in Britain. Yeah, probably the only good call King Sausage Fingers has made since he got on the bloody throne. You'd think with lugs the size of his, you'd be able to hear the general mutterings of discontent of the public, wouldn't you? For four years, Harry continued to list his country of residence as the UK in a documentation that confirms his status as a person with significant control over travel holding 75% or more of the shares and voting rights. The fact he has now changed tack suggests a renewed commitment to their new home in America and that the Sussexes are in no particular hurry to replace Frogmore. That also explains why him and his horrible missus are doing everything they can to totally bugger up the lives of regular working class people in the UK. Every single policy, him and that clumsy beekeeper he calls a wife, Every single policy they espouse shits all over the working classes in the UK. They want it so you can't fly anywhere, right? You can't take the kids on holiday to Spain or you're a bad person, but they're allowed to have 60 private jet flights a year. Yeah, they can go on a private jet to Elton John's yacht, but you, bus driver, you can't take the kids to Spain or else you're basically, you're basic, basically a one bollock genocidal Austrian. Yeah, you basically are. And he's a good person. Yeah. And he's definitely not part of a global cabal that appears to be a little bit noncy. A filing of Britain's company's house seen by Newsweek read, New country state usually resident, United States. The date the change was made is cited as the 29th of June 2023 in paperwork that was made public for the first time on Wednesday. That is to the day exactly when Buckingham Palace confirmed publicly that Harry and me again had officially moved out of Frogmore Cottage. The couple was sent an eviction notice in January 2023, just days after publication of the Prince's memoir, Spare, which were made sweeping allegations against the royals. The book painted Queen Camilla as a schemer who briefed against Harry to the media as part of a quest to become Queen Consort. The Sussexes were finally given until after King Charles's coronation to actually leave Frogmore and Harry appears to have dated the change in residency to the exact same moment as new stories announcing that Buckingham Palace had confirmed his departure. Listen, far be it, I'm totally on the fence with the royal family. I'm not like an old lady who collects all the plates, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm totally on the fence, reluctant royalist, because tradition means something, the system worked fine as it is for centuries. But being on the fence, I reserve the right to change my mind when new evidence presents itself. And in the last 10 years, we've had the ginger mog and his scheming harpy wife, King Sausage Fingers, who's been as oafish and stupid, wading into political issues, which are not part of his remit as you could possibly be. And surprisingly, you know, out of all of them who actually quite like now, his horse faced missus. Honestly, like judging by all the public accounts, for the last 10 years, Camilla's really endeared herself to the public. They reckon she's got a good sense of humour. She's nice. Pleasant to all the staff. Everybody kind of likes her. So, despite the fact she looks a bit like Rod Hull if someone poured a gallon of blister agent over his suite, uh, I'm quite into Queen Camilla. I like her. Now, in a total reverse from 10 years ago, when I actually quite like Prince Harry, now we're at Queen Camilla, Kate, William, 
Sausage Fingers, Ginger Prince, and then Subterranean, that scheming, manipulative, lying, two-faced, slack-drawed bucket of jizz. Me again, Mardi Arse, who, once again, everybody quite liked her, didn't they? A few years back, when they first got married and everybody went to the wedding, and everybody was saying, oh, new blood, this'll be nice. I, I quite liked her. And then a couple of years passed, all the stories became public, Stories of her being a proper necky bint at Wimbledon. Rudeness, scheming, lying, cheating. And then the second anybody called her out on it, a lot of nice old people at Wimbledon saying, oh, she was a bit rude. Then she goes, oh, yeah, it's because I'm a woman. Yeah, and I'm black, even though I'm not. Yeah, and remember, she's not. My knackersack has got more of a tan on it than me again, Mardi Arts. She's not black. She's mixed race, but she looks Italian. So, playing the race card and the woman card. The woman card. Oh, they don't like me because I'm a woman. Princess Diana, Queen Elizabeth, has she got spunk between her ears as well? That's it. She must have. She must have, because she's a plank. So, yeah, the new pecking order is kind of weird, isn't it? Anyway, went on a bit of a tangent, because I genuinely despise that necky, necky bin, neck of a thousand giraffes. Well, they're both necky, aren't they? Prince Harry, neck of E.T., me again, neck of a thousand giraffes. That's how it goes. That's just the way it is. I don't make the rules. I just call it how I see it. So, brilliant news. The Ginger Prince has officially buggered off, and he's now my next-door neighbour. So, yep, when he ends up in the sea, the only thing I'll throw him is a pair of concrete wellies. (laughs) But what do you think? What have you got to say? Do you actually still like the royal family? I know it's quite controversial for a bootneck to have turned his coat... But uh, who cares, right? I'm not a religious man. People say, ooh, you swore on the Bible. Well, doesn't mean that much to me. I reserve the right to follow the evidence where it lays. They call me a rebel and I welcome it. But I should suffer the misery of demons were I to make a whore of my soul. And that is where I am with the royal family that I formerly supported. Don't blame me. I like the Queen. I was a reluctant working class royalist up until a couple of years ago. But things have changed. Sausage fingers. Andrew is a full-blown glow-in-the-dark nonce. And Prince Harry and me again, Mardi Ars, are genuinely repellent. So unless they do some kind of regain, install William and Kate, and they continue to conduct themselves with relatively good graces, um, I am an ex-monarchist. What say you? Are you toughing it out? Or do you think Klaus has got the sausage fingers? Seems like there's a plan in action. And they're all part of it. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if you're happy that he's now my next door neighbour and not yours. And I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Toodle Pip. Cheers. (laughs) 